Hello and welcome to Worship with Lord of Light Lutheran Church and the Lutheran Campus Ministry at the University of Michigan. I'm really glad that you've joined us today. Um, today's sermon is from the Bishop of our Synod. Um, we didn't know that we were going to get this sermon until a couple of days before last week, so it's actually on last week's text. Um, and it's a really good sermon, and so I hope that you will enjoy it. Um, I hope that you have some water available next to you um, because we will be giving thanks for our baptism in just a few moments. And I also hope that you have um, a bread product and a festive drink ready because we will be sharing communion later on in this service. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, 
His name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence. The second reading comes from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in God there is no shadow at all. If we say that we have fellowship with God while we are walking in shadow, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, the one who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar, and God's word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not yet, who have not yet seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear ones and dear friends of Southeast Michigan, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who stood among the disciples on this day and said, Peace be with you. I'm Bishop Don Chris of the Southeast Michigan Synod, and on behalf of all of our sisters and brothers, our dear ones who will gather with us in worship this weekend, I bring you greetings. I bring you greetings as well from the members of my staff, Pastor Lauren Kirschkar, Pastor Sean Eubank, Ms. Robin McCants, and Ms. Beth Fisher. We are committed to helping serve you in the context where you serve, and I'm so grateful for your continued prayers, your care, and your love for Lauren and Sean as they go through their journeys. Um, and so here we are on this second Sunday in Easter, and one of the reasons that I wanted to preach on this day was that this is traditionally a day when so many of our religious professionals take the Sunday off. You see, we have rushed through the great glory, the excitement, the frenzy, the hard work of Holy Week. We've done Easter. We have proclaimed Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And there is a general impulse after that for folks standing in front of you who have helped organize, lead, preach, direct, all of the things then to collapse. So I wanted to, uh, in a different way, be more tied to the lectionary. So this is, this is an Easter 2 Sunday sermon. Um, the other reason that I wanted to be clear about that was because of all those things, there isn't just a fall off among clergy on this second Sunday after Easter, but also for lots of other people who are really very good churchgoers. In the business, this Sunday, this second Sunday after Easter, is known as Low Sunday. It's not low how a rose air blooming Sunday. It's not the cattle are lowing, the poor baby wakes. It's not that kind of Sunday, but it's just low Sunday because it's generally low attendance. So I'm glad to be here with you in wherever context you gather trust that this time will be a blessing for all of us and thanks to all of our preachers and worship leaders and music leaders and all the folks that work so hard to, to get congregations in wherever place and shape that you're gathering to get you ready for Easter. So 
we read this gospel, the one that I just read, this, this story from the 20th chapter of John, we read this this Sunday every year, but because we always read it on Low Sunday, uh, we don't, uh, as many of us perhaps as should, we don't always remember or have heard this as often as we have, should have, that is, which is too bad, really, because um, not the least of which is that this 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 part of this gospel sounds like the beginning of a made-for-television thriller. Consider, there are 10 men in a locked room, silent and afraid. There had been 13 of them to start, but their leader had been brutally murdered by the authorities, and the one who had betrayed him was gone as well. Meanwhile, the one named Thomas had stepped out for a while. Why? We don't know, but perhaps because perhaps because he could no longer stand to breathe all that air with the others and to suck in the disappointment and sadness that must have filled the room. And so there were ten. They were an odd assortment, fishermen, a tax collector, students of religion. The one thing that they had in common was that they had come when they were called, choosing to follow Jesus and to leave their old lives behind. Now they did not know what to expect. They did not know what these tragic events meant, except that their greatest hopes had been dashed, their weakness had been exposed, and the future was now entirely dark and uncertain. And then, with absolutely no warning, they were eleven again. Though the door had op not opened and Thomas had not returned, but into that room, with the doors not open but locked, standing in the middle of their fear and sorrow, suddenly there was Jesus, the one they had thought was gone forever, the one that they knew they had deserted, the one that they never expected to see again. They had hidden themselves away for fear of the people outside the room. Jesus' unexpected return from the dead brought with it a whole new level of anxiety. But the doors were locked, not open, so they could not run. Dear ones, have you ever known what it feels like to hurt someone very badly that you love very much? Maybe it was something you did. Maybe it was something that you failed to do. But you know what that feels like? The disciples did. They had all left him. They had each of them abandoned their hope to save their own lives. Even Peter, who had been told he would deny knowing Jesus three times, went right ahead and did it anyway. Now, knowing that this time in that locked room there was no escape, the ten could only wait for him to speak. Would Jesus condemn them for their faithfulness, faithlessness? Would he tell them that he was going to start over, but with a whole new band of followers? Would he name the ways that each one of them had chosen to save his own life while he gave his away? Jesus opened his mouth and said the last thing that any of them expected, peace be with you. And then he showed them the wounds that were the price of that peace. Dear ones, just last week we heard that story of the faithful women going to the tomb and shared with them their sorrow and astonishment at what they found. When they got there, the great stone meant to seal the entrance of the cave where they had placed the body. The great stone intended to mark the boundary between life on one side and death on the other. That great stone had been rolled away and Jesus' body was gone. You remember that story, don't you, dear ones? Can you imagine for just a moment what even the smallest part of that discovery felt like for them? Have you ever felt a weight lifted from your mind or your heart, a heavy weight, an enormous weight that you thought would be there forever? Maybe it was because you got a good report from your doctor, the tests came back fine, your blood work was good, the lump was benign. Or maybe that weight lifted was professional, the company isn't moving after all, they want to increase your hours, your job is still there. Or maybe you know what it's like to be surprised by a word of grace and reconciliation that comes as a light in the darkness or as water in the desert or as a path through the wilderness. 
But you know that feeling of a weight being lifted? I hope you do. I hope you do, dear ones. I hope you do. In the church, we speak of Easter as bringing new life into the world, and certainly Easter does that. But one of the ways that that new life comes to us, one of the ways that we can feel and know what that new life is, is through the unexpected and unlooked for signs of forgiveness and hope and peace that keep breaking into our broken, our suffering, our COVID-ridden world. Peace be with you, is what Jesus said. Peace be with you, is what Jesus promised. And then he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. Now, St. John does not record the details of Jesus' departure from that locked room. When the doors opened again, it was Thomas coming back. And while he listened to the incredible news that the ten of them shared, he could not, was not ready to believe it. What he told them was that he needed to see with his own eyes and to feel with his own hands the marks of the nails and the spear. I've often, I have also wondered whether he did not also need to hear with his own ears Jesus' voice speaking that word of undeserved grace. And grace is always undeserved, dear ones. That's what makes it grace. But if he needed to hear with his own ears those words that the other ones had heard. Now you know how this story goes. I just read it. A week later, the 11 of them in the room together, still there, still 11, and the doors are shut, although this time perhaps not locked. And there is Jesus again. Peace be with you is what he tells them, this time a third time, speaking those words speaking those words into a room which had been filled with sorrow and fear, but which was now alive with hope. And this time Thomas gets to hear the voice. He gets to see with his own eyes and touch with his own hands the wounds that had been fatal, but were no longer serious. It was more than he hoped for, more than he deserved. My Lord and my God, is both his confession and his affirmation of faith, and it was enough. The disciples locked the doors to keep the world out, but in spite of their precautions and despite their fears, Jesus came in. Jesus came into the room, he came into their hearts, he came into their lives in ways which changed them and still change the world. In the midst of their fear and their uncertainty about the future, and that we know, dear ones, that we know, the, the disciples heard Jesus speaking a word of peace and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Dear ones, Easter is the reason that we gather on Sundays. It is the season of new life, of forgiveness and hope. Thomas got to see and touch with his own hands the truth of Jesus' life and death and life again. We do not have that privilege. But before he left the disciples that second time, Jesus gave them a beatitude, a, a blessing that now belongs to us. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And Jesus keeps coming back to us as we gather here in our congregations, in our living rooms, wherever we are hearing this word. Jesus keeps coming as we gather to celebrate the new life and promise of Easter in the bread and wine of communion through the water of baptism and by the words of grace and peace and forgiveness spoken in his name. The stone has been rolled away. The doors are now unlocked. Christ is risen. Peace be with you, dear ones. Amen.
On this third Sunday of Easter, we pray for all in any need, responding to each petition with words echoing today's song. Hear us when we call. Holy and righteous God, for the church we pray, for our own congregation, for the churches of all our neighbors and around the globe, and especially for Christians in Nigeria and wherever martyrdoms threaten. O God, our Savior, bless your people and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For the earth, we pray. For the well-being of terrains, plants, and animals wild and tame. For the birds, especially songbirds whose numbers are decreasing. And for this week's Earth Day, that good will come from the worldwide observance. O God, our creator, restore your handiwork and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For peace, we pray. For the end of warfare, terrorism, and cruelty to the poor. For respectful treatment of refugees and all who are incarcerated. And especially for Northern Ireland and Myanmar and other places of civil unrest. O God, our sovereign, bring peace to the nations and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For justice, we pray. For the liberation of all who are oppressed. For an end to ethnic and economic prejudice for an end to police violence, and for all court cases in this land and every land. O oh God, our refuge, protect the vulnerable and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For all who are sick and suffering, for those who have no access to the coronavirus vaccines, for the children afflicted with the virus variants, for everyone who fears receiving medical advice and assistance, for those who live with chronic pain, for those whose pain is known only to you, and especially for Claire, Nathaniel, Karen, Ingrid, Mason, Lauren, Sean, Sarah, Julie, Sarah, Adeline, Donovan, Susan, and all those we hold in our hearts. O oh God, our caregiver, heal the sick and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. We remember before you all the witnesses of the resurrection, the saints of old, those who have died by violence, especially Dante Wright, for those who have died of the coronavirus, for those who have died by suicide, and for our relatives and friends who now rest in you, especially Allison and Tom. O oh God, our resurrection, give us life now and forever and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. Receive these prayers into your heart of mercy for the sake of the Holy and Righteous One, Jesus Christ, our wondrous Redeemer. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. 
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. You protect and preserve us and make the ordinary holy through the power of your love. Praise to you for all of creation, for making humankind from the very dust of the earth and giving us all we need for sustenance. Praise to you for preserving Noah and his family through their 40 days of sheltering in place and giving them the sign of the rainbow when it was safe to venture out again. Praise to you for bringing the Hebrew people safely through the sea and beyond the reach of oppression. In the wilderness, you provided them with manna and water from the rock as they journeyed into a new reality. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one, who turned water into wine, who fed thousands with a few loaves and fish, who healed, taught, and blessed all those who came close to him and those separated by distance, who loved the world so much that he became one of us, sharing our common life, suffering and dying and gloriously rising, breaking the bonds of sin, death, and the devil so that nothing could ever separate us from you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and this cup, we remember Jesus' presence among us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit. Make this bread and wine before us, the body and blood of your Son. Enter into our locked rooms. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Strengthen and preserve us for the trials we endure now. Send us your Holy Spirit to comfort, empower, challenge, and encourage us to be a sign of resurrection to the world. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with those gathered on screens across time and space, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All who thirst, all who hunger, Come and be filled with the goodness of God. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ Jesus. The God of life, creator, son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia.